Welcome back to Traveling with Crushworth. We're excited you're with us for the ride in the hustle and bustle of London, England. As a global leader, this city stands tall among world capitals, celebrating its epic foundation as Londinium, 2,000 years of history and everything British. On this episode, Lizzie and I visit the iconic palace and prison, the Tower of London. Dinner in Chinatown and an over-the-top show in the West End? Yes, please. There's nothing like walking through Leicester Square. Something to look at, take in at every glance. We couldn't help it. We had to go for a shopping trip at, you guessed it, the world-famous Harrods Department Store. You'll want to climb under the Guildhall to the city's Roman Amphitheater. Next, Lizzie's my tour guide at one of her favorite childhood spots, the Natural History Museum. actually at the top of Monument and Lizzie what is this? This was uh, built as a memorial to the Great Fire here in London. And the year was 1666 and we walked up about 9,000 steps. Uh, the back of me is uh, quite sweaty wouldn't you say? Very. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> but this is a fantastic place. This is something that Lizzie and I have never done. No never we, and we just stumbled upon it. Yes, and uh, so we'll walk back down and we're uh, going to show you more of London. See you later. Its shadow cast over the city for almost a thousand years. The Tower of London is imposing in size, its formidable legacy forever linked with royal power and fear. A status symbol of kings and queens, some of Britain's grisly and most sorrowful stories played out here. William the Conqueror's reign of terror against early Britons, regicide, torture, the princes in the tower and Anne Boleyn's beheading. A near inescapable fortress on the River Thames, these walls, once known for keeping people in, protect the nation's most important treasures, chief among them, the crown jewels of England. Tower of London and I am in the uh, the room that celebrates the uh, line of kings and uh, the armor of King Henry VIII behind me and as you can see uh, talk about protecting the uh, family jewels if you know what I mean. Revered as one of the world's earliest museum exhibits, the White Tower's line of kings in all its forms has captivated visitors for centuries, from Henry VIII's armor built for a slimmer king to that which was worn by the executed Charles I. From the Chapel of St. John, where a peasant mob tore a trembling Bishop Simon of Sudbury in 1381, dragging him from the Norman keep to his death, Lizzie and I are following the footfalls of Henry III and Edward I in the medieval palace. We're standing at Traitor's Gate, where criminals and prisoners were brought by boat under St. Thomas's Tower. Above this water gate, we gazed on the lodgings of Edward I. Soak in the mysteries of the Wakefield Tower audience chamber and private chapel, where it's believed Henry VI was murdered while in prayer, held captive during the War of the Roses. We're in former cells in the Salt Tower, where captives ex names, sigils, and last messages, remnants of 900 years of prisoners, executions, and torment. From Henry Walpole, a Catholic priest who even under pain of torture would not name names and was hung, drawn, and quartered for his faith, to Michael Moody, imprisoned for his part in a plot to blow up Queen Elizabeth I's bed as she slept or poison her and Hugh Draper, an innkeeper imprisoned for sorcery. His last known message, an intricate astrological sign. Nothing prepared us for the lower Wakefield Tower. Within it, the horrors humans have inflicted upon others, using tools of torture like the scavenger's daughter to compress and contort bones. 
A surprising black and white face greeted us in the bloody tower, with more prisoner carvings scratched into the stones of Beauchamp Tower. A beautiful, yet haunting way for these people's stories to live on in permanence. Their thoughts, beliefs, loves, lives lived marked for future generations. One of our favorite places to visit in London, Chinatown, a hub for numerous East Asian cultures, offers many authentic restaurants and a dynamic food culture. Lizzie and I are at Lotus Garden, a hop, skip, and a jump from our West End musical. The highlight of our dinner for two, making our own crispy duck pancakes. The food was fantastic and we gladly recommend this place to any travelers. Next time we're in London, we're sure to spend more time in Chinatown. There's nothing like visiting Harrods, long a symbol of London and Britain, and popularized in movies and TV. This opulent department store is one of the largest in Europe. Opened in its Knightsbriggs location in 1849, we had an absolute blast touring the awesome food halls. One of the city's main tourist attractions, Harrods isn't your average department store. So this is an amazing place. You can see all kinds of cakes and teas and toys. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna walk you over to the coffee roasters. You can see them roasting in the background, you see? Ooh. Never guess who I just found in line. We're taking the underground to the Guild Hall, home to the City of London Corporation its history stretching to 1067 when William the Conqueror allowed this city to maintain its independent rule. This building's story spans more than 800 years of Lord Mayors and powerful guild leaders shaping the London we know today. These walls have seen the best and worst of municipal politics, from everyday governance to the medieval trials and executions that shook a nation. We came for what lies below, this level of heretics dating to AD 70, a time when Roman Londinium thrived. We're underneath the Guild Hall yard, pushing past the fabric of time to the remnants of the city's only amphitheater, one of the largest uncovered in Britain. Built to hold at most 10,500 people, it was here in which gladiators did combat and executions took place as public spectacles. We've walked through what was once the amphitheater's eastern entrance, finding surprises along the way, original timber drain beams, and even the sand on which ancient feet once trod. I'm excited to bring Kevin to the Natural History Museum, one of my favorite London spots. I have great memories from visiting when I was little. My favourite exhibits are still the dinosaur fossils and the animatronic terrible lizards themselves, realistic and just the right amount of awe-inspiring. London's Natural History Museum in itself features a history as unique as its artefacts. Its originator and beneficiary, Sir Hans Sloan, willed his massive collection of specimens to Parliament upon his death in 1753. By 1881, the items once seen in the British Museum were moved to what was then a triumphant new museum. Today, this iconic city landmark honours the vision of its first curator, Sir Richard Owen. In the architecture and build, its large halls are cathedral for the wonders of nature. A sometimes controversial pioneer in his own right, Owen coined the word dinosaur and his clashes with colleagues, especially Charles Darwin, were the stuff of legend. Thank you for watching this episode of Traveling with Crushworth. To return to Laycock Village in the Cotswolds, click the link to the left. If you want to travel with us to top places outside London, click the link on the right. 
let us know what you loved about London. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. Thanks for watching and see you next time.